Do you guys remember that video of that guy breaking the world record for speed reading? <laughs> Don't you ever wish you could learn that fast? What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video with me, Ben Roguejean, AKA the Seattle Data Guy. Today we're gonna talk about how I constantly try to keep up with everything that has to do with technology, especially at least in the data space, just because it's so constantly moving and so constantly changing. Right. It's just so frustrating, right? Like one year we're all doing one thing, the next year we're like, what's this data mesh and data fabric? And you know, what are we all doing with our lives when we're constantly having to learn all these new terms and data practices? Especially when you're working more as like a data infrastructure consultant, there's just new components that are coming out on a daily basis that we're all having to kind of keep up with somehow, new solutions, new tools, new best practices apparently that are not even tested, but they are coming out daily. So you need to at least be able to speak on them, you know, why a company may or may not want to utilize one of these tools. Um, so here's what I use, or here are the techniques that I've used over the past couple of years in order to try to keep up with everything that's just overflowing towards me on a daily basis. You know, it is definitely drinking from a fire hose, so to speak, or to use some sort of cliche business term. But I do think there are ways to mitigate this problem and uh, let's kind of go into what I've done over the past few years in order to learn all of this stuff. So I'm gonna break this down into a few different sections. I'll kind of tell you what the concept is, kind of why I do it, and maybe how you can apply it to yourself in each of those sections. So starting with just having a solid foundation. And what I mean there is to say that technology, again, is exploding and it's just growing at a rate that we can't keep up with. But at the end of the day, if you have solid fundamentals in technology, it's much easier to kind of see how all of these different concepts interplay with each other and are somewhat related, right? Like what's new is old, what's old is new. Everything's kind of going through cycles. And as technology kind of shifts and we go through like the cloud paradigm and all of this, you know, things might be changing to some degree. So if you have a solid foundation in technology in general, so yes, that means a solid foundation in programming, a solid foundation in more like IT concepts. So people consider that like networking, system admin, some things like SFDP and things of that nature, as well as a solid understanding of design principles, whether that be at the database level, more system architecture level or so on. If you have that solid foundation, as things kind of change, you can kind of see where different components fit in your new architecture. Now, in order to apply this concept, here's all you have to do. Slow down at the beginning. I think a lot of people rush to try to learn all the cool new things that are coming out on a daily basis. But if you're still newer in the technology space, if you're rushing for all the new things and you're just trying to basically learn how to write the best book in the world and you're still stuck on formulating sentences, it's gonna be really hard for you to, again, write the best book in the world. In the same way, if you don't have solid programming skills or understand when someone talks about ports and IP addresses, you're gonna have a real hard time even implementing very simple systems because you don't understand these pretty basic concepts in the IT world. So as you're going through your first few years of learning technology, don't feel like you need to rush through every concept. Yeah, you don't need to be an expert in everything, but make sure you have a solid foundation in your baseline skills. And I've definitely talked about this in my video on like the data engineering pyramid, which you can find a link here, but making sure you build that foundation to this pyramid will let you get to all of these other skills. I think you see a similar kind of concept go around in the world of like sports. Show me wax on, wax off. In particular, MMA, there are plenty of examples of solid wrestlers who came into the MMA, maybe polish up some of their striking or at least learn how to use striking with their wrestling in such a way that they were basically unstoppable. Just look at John Jones, again, despite all controversies, but he really was, he was an unstoppable force when it came to the fact that he was already an amazing wrestler and then went to be an amazing martial artist in general. For my next point, which is gonna have a few sub points, whenever you're learning anything, I think it's really easy to be a passive learner, especially in this modern world where we have all of these intro courses, right? Or intro books or anything of that nature where you're just kind of doing this guided process and someone else is basically telling you how to think, right? Like I've definitely seen plenty of articles, right? Like creating your first neural network in 10 minutes or something like that. If all it took in reality to develop a neural network that actually went into production was 10 minutes of time, we would all be machine learning engineers by now. And that's not as easy as it is because when you just follow instructions, there's kind of this lack of, I think, thinking that goes on, right? It's not very active in terms of how you're thinking. You're just kind of reading through the instructions and not actually trying to answer a question yourself. So you need to figure out how to be active in your learning process. Yes, obviously starting out your whole process of learning is usually with a video, but while you're watching that video, make sure you're kind of taking some time to write down notes. 
Do the whole David Goggins things. Buy a notebook and fill it up with everything that you've learned. Even if you never look at it again, like I, that's usually what I've done in the past is I might just fill out a notebook with everything that I'm trying to learn. I'll never open it again, but for me, just watching is not sufficient, right? Like just watching, my brain will start thinking about other things. It won't focus as well as it should. But if I'm trying to force myself to do other things like writing notes at the same time about what I'm learning, then I'm a little bit better when it comes to retention. But of course, that's only part one of this process, right? Like that's part of it, notes. But you still run the risk of not really thinking about what you're writing. You might just be kind of writing what you're hearing and not actually processing it. And so that's when I usually force myself to do things like write articles. Um, for those of you who know, I've probably put out upwards of 200 articles in my career. And that's only the ones that you guys see. I have probably have another 200 that no one has seen because it was just about me learning a subject and trying to write it down and force myself to actually do more than just again, take some notes, but actually write an article about, hey, what is this topic? What is this product? What is this solution? Because that's how I personally start processing a lot more of that information and start making connections to other things that I'm already learning or have learned in the past. Again, building off that foundation. And of course, I think this goes without saying, which is you need to do a project. I think it's unavoidable. It's cliche, I get it, we all say it, but personally, if you really want something to stick in your brain, you're gonna have to do a project. And if you really want it to stick in your brain, you're gonna have to do a new project like that every year or two on that subject. Because if you're not using whatever that skill is constantly enough, uh, I think your brain might keep it somewhere. I'm not a neuroscientist, but it still, for me, always requires a little bit of quote unquote unpacking or unzipping whenever I'm having to reuse that subject, especially if it's been three to five years and I've never thought about that subject again. I mean, just think about geometry. If you happen to take like the GRE, um, geometry is a pretty basic subject. We all learn like what in first, second or third grade. I don't recall which. And the first time you see it on the GRE again, you've been doing calculus and all this other math. And then suddenly you make very dumb mistakes in geometry, which again, should be an overall simple subject. So you need to find some way to apply this knowledge, um, whether it's building something at work or building something in your own free time where you're forcing yourself to put something together and having to problem solve. Personally, for me, it is that problem solving that really starts to make the connections final or at least better. Um, because that's when I really start thinking through things, start thinking, why isn't something working? And I start asking all those questions, right? If you go through that guided learning experience, oftentimes it just works. And so if you never actually have to think why it's not working, you're not gonna realize why it is working in the first place. You're just gonna trust whoever put it out there. And I've had plenty of people, whenever I've created some sort of intro uh, article or video, complain if the code isn't working perfectly. Now that you've built a solid foundation, you know, you've done deliberate studying, next, I like to force myself to have some sort of deadline. What I mean there is I need some sort of final goal, right? Like why am I actually learning this thing? What ends up happening if you're trying to learn a new subject after a little bit of time is you kind of want to give up. You kind of ask yourself, why am I trying to learn this topic? You know, what's the point? I imagine it's the same thing with people who maybe try running and they need some sort of final goal. So they pick a marathon because at the end of the day, personally, it's like if I'm learning something, but I don't feel like there's a reason for why I'm learning it, my brain just one, isn't excited about it. Two, just seems to want to forget it, right? Like it wants to do anything else. It's like, why are you learning this subject? It has no value for you right now. So you're kind of just wasting your time. So for that reason, you should give yourself some sort of deadline, whether that means you're going to release some sort of application by some sort of date, or maybe release some sort of article again on a certain target date, whatever it might be, force yourself to have a deadline of why you're doing what you're doing. Again, that's what works for me. Having something that's looming over my head that put pressure on me to keep learning, to keep moving forward. Because if I don't, you know, at least for myself, I'm going to look dumb. And personally, I don't like feeling dumb. So that's something that motivates me to kind of keep going forward in terms of like trying to learn a new thing. Now with this baseline, you know, you've got your solid foundation, you're improving how you're studying. You know, you're not just studying for the sake of studying and scrolling through article after article on Medium, as well as then having some sort of deadline, you should see hopefully some improvements in how you're actually retaining a lot of this information. But here comes the next problem in the technology space. You still will not learn fast enough. You just can't. There is no way that anyone can learn all of tech in general, right? You know, you're going to have a hard time learning everything in DevOps, data science, data engineering, software engineering in a lifetime, right? Because one, it's going to all change by the time you've learned it all. And two, there's just too much to even begin with. So once you have that foundation for skills for kind of newer or hype based topics, I would learn just enough so that you can have a conversation about it. And then as you need to use that skill, 
then really dive a little bit deeper. At the end of the day, whether it's like new best practices, new design principles, whatever it might be, are just that new and they might disappear in a year or two, right? Things that we're talking about and hyping up now might not stay forever. The concepts that are really valuable will stand the test of time. You know, it's not just gonna be some hot trend. It's not just gonna be what people are doing now. It's gonna be the things that have been done for the last 10, 20, 30 years in technology. And yes, obviously things are changing and you should be aware of it, but it probably won't take you long to look back over the last five years to see things that were maybe hyped up not that long ago that we're kind of shifting away from. So yes, there's a ton of new cool topics to learn about, but we have no idea whether they're gonna stay around or not, or at the very least, if they're gonna shift how we implement them. So of course it's important to keep up with all of this new information that's coming out, but it's important to realize that adoption and implementation of things doesn't always happen. And that sometimes these technologies and design principles might disappear. So you might spend a ton of time learning a new thing and it might just go away. Of course, you might pick the right hype train and you know you might be the only expert in some very niche area of technology and in turn become a millionaire because you're the only person that knows how to utilize it. Constantly learning new things in the technology world is a challenge, but making sure you actually have some sort of process in learning and being deliberate, I think, is important. Uh, however you go forward with your learning, just make sure you actually have something in place that works for you Whatever that process is, I, I hope at this point you've kind of at least figured out how to learn things for you. Again, everyone has different ways that they can learn. If this video wasn't helpful, I think Tina Huang also has a great video on how to learn technical concepts quickly. So I'm gonna put a link below to that video if you'd be interested in watching it. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for your time and I will see you next time. Bye.